I was afraid. And they call it transphobia for a reason. In the last decade, there has been a huge spike in transgender identification among teenage girls. You know, woke activists have taken the position that we are never allowed to question anyone's transition. They're grooming seven-year-olds. Every day, the attacks on trans kids grow louder, and more anti-trans bills keep moving through state legislatures. How did all of this become normal? Trans kids aren't new, and they aren't going anywhere. If you think this is concerning, then you've likely fallen victim to the actual trend sweeping across America and pervading this room today, an epidemic of panic and misinformation. I'm Amara Jones. In this season of the Anti-Trans Hate Machine, we're going to illuminate how the right wing has fueled these bills by generating a breathtaking and wide-ranging disinformation campaign. Christian nationalists are manufacturing pseudoscientific theories and using the entire anti-trans hate machine to pipe them out into the mainstream. The goal is to create a rationale for these bills. They're so good at all of this because they've been at it since the 1970s when they honed their tactics in the push for conversion therapy. The truth of the matter is there are tens of thousands of people who have come out of homosexuality. Because conversion therapy never really went away. Without fail, they would deprive us of sleep to the point where they could feed us whatever they wanted to feed us about ourselves. And we were so scared that even if we did have the wherewithal to push back, none of us would. I will show you how this updated anti-trans pseudoscience is catching on ultimately being laundered by some of the most powerful newsrooms in the world. It's spreading like wildfire on the internet. It's then being discussed by families and churches and parents and at school board meetings. It's just this megaphone. None of this is an accident. It's a strategy to delegitimize trans people I was just a shell of who I I had previously been. I I lost the fire inside me. And create a world where existence is a question. And they don't care who they hurt in the process. This militant language made me believe that if I take her to a gender clinic, that they might make her trans. A trans person, under the right conditions, especially if they're in a vulnerable space, like, can come to believe that their transition was this, like, horrible, horrible, damaging thing. Opportunistic journalists are exploiting this pain, pushing disinformation from the fringe of the far right into everyday media. You know, and and I cannot say the last three years since this article came out have been bad for me professionally. It's been the opposite. I've been very fortunate. Subscribe to season two of the Anti-Trans Hate Machine, A Plot Against Equality, wherever you listen to podcasts. I mean, Imara, I wish it wasn't true. I wish I weren't here talking about this. I wish it hadn't happened. 